Would I pull the trigger long? <laughs> Don't freak out, man. It's just another half hour on the TV ocean. I'm Chris Strouth, and tonight I will be playing the part of Captain Steubing on this love boat of musical madness that we call what? For tonight's special guest stars, we have those up and comers in the dream pop world, Colfax Abbey. It's not a church, well, it kind of is, but not in this context. It's a superb little trio of the ethereal and spacey variety. So now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, let us turn our attention to the set of ring and the daring doings of Rob, Christian, and Steve. Colfax Abbey. <laughs> And now let's adjourn to the captain's table to make idle chit chat with Colfax Abbey. So, how long has Colfax Abbey been around, Christian? Uh, we had our first gig October. October of what year? October of last year. It's coming so up. Not even a year. Wow, so you're young, you're youthful. We're pups, I think. <laughs> Pop pink. pups. Mm. pups. What a goofy thought. When rock and roll be in school. <laughs> I have to say. Rock I never heard that one. <laughs> can I use that yeah. one? <laughs> you can tell John Cass that that's what he's running. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So the band's been around about a year. Yep. Where you, you played a lot. You played the entry like what, like every week? Like you live there? Like you have cots in the basement or something? Well, we played there quite a bit when we first came out, but we don't do it as much anymore. It's not really worth it, you know. I mean, I think playing once every Wait, month can you, and a half. Can, can you say that once again? <laughs> playing the Seventh Street entry, folks, <laughs> is not worth it's, it. It's, it's not really worth. No, it's it's not, a good thing to no, say. No, we're much <laughs> rather <laughs> playing like, oh, say, somebody's basement. No, for it's parties. not worth. Playing, no, what Chris means playing is playing as much as some of the. The Red Sea is a good play. play you know? <laughs> I think. I, I don't want It's really easy to get your yourself um, worn out, and I see it every day in the office. These bands, mm -hmm. I, they're real hot for. A, f a month or two months, and all of a sudden they don't play anymore. Really? Now, did you guys have another band? Question, cool. Rob. Did you guys have another band? No. Uh, he entered an ad, actually. Plug time. You have a single coming out, don't you? Mm -hmm. What's the single? Tell me about it. Who's it on? What's it from? It's a uh, single. The A side is called Chameleon, and the B side is called Silver. And it's out on John Cass's label, Prospective Records. Prospective Records. Pro. Prospective. Prospective. Prospective record.
So now you uh, recorded this uh, with a guy by the name of Ed Ackerson. Yeah, we uh, recorded. He's, he's pretty well known. Um, yeah, sure. he's a super producer, super Amazing. super guy, super he, musician. He had a couple like a uh, '60s cover bands, didn't he? What's that? He had a couple '60s cover bands. Oh, uh, back in his early days, Mr. Ackerson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was that one cover band of his? The Dig. Was so, uh, 27 <laughs> something. <laughs> what do you want to be dissing him on TV? I know, I'm that's sort of wrong. dissing him. <laughs> I'm totally not dissing him. So it must have been really exciting for you to work with somebody as cool as Ed. Oh, I mean, yeah. It took a long time to kind of to kind of penetrate that, that circle. But yeah, it yeah. was sort of funny at first. It's great now. I mean, he uh, just makes us sound like a million bucks, you know. And, and he's a very relaxing guy to work with. He's... He's, and he's doing, he's got some great stuff working right now, so. Um, yeah, we've been in there about five times in the studio with Mr. Ackerson, and. Uh, we'll be back in there soon. Yeah, we're going back in to finish up recording for a CD we plan to put out um, at the, in the beginning of next year, beginning of 95. Put it out, maybe like a CD5. I want to be a math teacher. You'd like to be a math teacher? High school, college level? Oh, uh, high school. Uh, gifted, though, you know. Uh, advanced level students. Steve, what do you want to do in five years if the <laughs> music doesn't work out? You know, I don't know. I'm kind of in one of those little post college, post college, little stupors. gray gray area. You know, trying to carve out some sort of, mm -hmm. you know, dabbled around. So I'm looking to hone in on something. I don't know. I've been involved in political oriented things, and maybe continue with that. I'd like to get in some type of studio production too. I think that is just fantastic work, you know, I mean, the whole creation process of something, forging what, you know, people do on the other side of the glass and just, sure. and, you know, I think that'd be very, very exciting. Our experiences in the studio have just been phenomenal. The best. You know, I think Ed is fun. really, since he's a player, an accomplished player, oh, definitely. I think he's able to help people realize what they want. Well, also, you know, his, his partner, Jason Orris, who owns mm -hmm. the studio that we, we record at, has really gotten me excited about this sort of thing. You know, I, I think I'd really like to get into it a little bit more. You definitely always play music. The whole production side is more new to me. I'm, I've always been a player, and I want to continue doing that, but I, I've dabbled around in different instruments, so I think I need to hone in on something. That's my thing. <laughs> I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to play keep learning everything cello else. or piano or something. Like cello is... Yeah, you play cello. I used, I used to play cello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's play it's violin. Yeah. You know, visit Acapulco. It's a beautiful, that's, uh, beautiful place. <laughs> I think that's the uh, cover of the record. That's that's level. Well, who did that for you? Uh, that was done by um, a man named Peter Otto, who works out at Nice Man Merchandising, who has been helping us out a lot. He's a fantastic guy. I got the shirt Target. What'd you get? Uh, what'd you get your degree in? Mm, urban Studies. Wow. In American that History. You? What's your day job? I'm a community organizer. He's yes. got a really straight he's, job. He's got a straight job, huh? What do you What do you do? Organize well, the community. You know, um, do a lot of dining in local establishments, meeting the folks in the neighborhood. Southeast Minneapolis, the Longfellow neighborhood. So you just go from cafe to cafe? Essentially. Eat, say hi. We're actually involved in the infamous NRP process, the Neighborhood Revitalization Program.
mateys, you're still aboard the what boat. Now don't forget, the part of Carol Channing is being played by Colfax Abbey. So Christian, <laughs> spontaneously, <laughs> no. so Christian, uh, what do you see yourself doing in five years? Why? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to make a record. I want to go on the road. Teach Live the life for a while, you know? Everyone wants, I think everyone wants to do that. Don't you think? Sure, I'm asking you. <laughs> no, that's, that's where I see myself. I definitely do. You know, I would love to be on the performance side of things. Well, what if somebody chopped off your hands? You've got no hands. Mm. <laughs> Consulting. A lot of things will be over <laughs> for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's that supposed to be? Exactly what it sounds like, I suppose. Funny. What would I do? Yeah, Someone you can't... chopped off my hands? Yeah, so. you had a lobotomy and you couldn't play music anymore. I definitely still think I'd like to be on one side of the coin, you know, in the, in the uh, business aspect of it. More for a label, something like that. I'm, I, I love the industry. You know, it's got a lot of bad points, but I think it has a lot of good points, too. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. I'm gonna sneeze again. It's kind of a... <laughs> Fine, Isn't really Patrick Duffy Bland on sitcom now after his career floundered as a, as a serious actor? Well, yeah, he was on, like, Dallas or he something, was just a fun, and then yeah. he died, yeah. but then it was like, psych, I'm not really dead, you just dreamt the whole thing. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah. I liked him best as the man from Atlantis. He was always kind of a boneless actor. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a... He's a, you know, he's a loser, and if he ever comes back to my house... Still owes me a hundred dollars. I have Crispin uh -huh. Glover's phone number. Wow. His home phone number. Really? Dude, I got it. <laughs> and, uh, it's Crispin dang. Glover's phone number. Yeah. You call him at home well, alone no, he caught me late at night. One time. I chatted on the club once. Right? Yeah, I talked to him on the phone for a little bit. And sure, Chris. He needed the number. Mm -hmm. or he needed to talk to Steve. I'm like, well, can I get a number where you're at? He's like, well, I'm at home right now. And <laughs> he talks just like he does in the movie. It's just all weird. Huh? So you call him late at night at I, home? All the time. Bedtime stories. He, listens, it. he <laughs> listens to his answer machine. He Christian enjoys Christian. it a lot. Hello? <laughs> Is this Christian? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to hear from you. <laughs> oh. Um, the beer drinking, he leaves aside. Yeah, I, I didn't even drink any beer. I studied all my business and went uh -huh. to my fraternity meetings. You still doesn't drink any beer. So no, you were a uh, you were a fraternity member in college. Yeah. So do you know many like do, like I know the, I would, the alphabet. Would you like to share the alphabet with us? I usually don't. Wait, uh, you know, if we had a match. <laughs> yeah, we had to do that. Did you guys have to do that? When it comes to UFOs. Everybody's got a different opinion. And whether you're a believer or not, there are some things that just don't wash. For instance, the Roswell crash back in the 40s, after the government came out and said, yes, we have an alien craft with dead alien bodies. The, the government came out and said this. Then boom, the next day, weather balloon. Oh, of course, a weather balloon that zigzagged across the sky, crashed over the mountains, exploded, left four alien bodies laying on the ground, and material that our best scientists couldn't decipher. Weather balloon. Of course, weather balloon.
Well, all ashore, that is going ashore. Yes, that's right. The what boat is pulling into the dock. And as we bid farewell to Doc, Isaac, and Colfax Abbey, we are reminded of the gentle knowledge that we will always have Puerto Vallarta. I would like to take the time to thank our new sponsors, The Electric Fetus, our amigos Muy Especial Rev 105, because we're all children of the revolution, and that gentle giant of sound, Total Music Systems. See you next time, same what time, same what channel. And remember, it's a great big universe and we're all really puny. Just tiny little specks about the size of Mickey Rooney. Peace. This program was brought to you with support from Rev 105 Radio, the radio revolution, by Total Music Systems, Total Music for sound results. The Electric Fetus Stores, for music, clothing, and gifts, find it all at the Fetus.